Ah, 1986. It was a different time. This is what your mom looked like. This is what your dad probably looked like. The only things they played on the radio were Phil Collins and Bon Jovi. And if you went to the gym, everyone exercised like this. You know, sometimes I wonder if I was born in the wrong era. You know what else happened in 1986? One of the first viruses for Windows PCs was written. Known as Brain, it was made by Basit and Amjad Alvi, two brothers who lived in Pakistan. Its purpose? It was an anti-piracy measure to stop people from copying heart rate software they'd created. And this was obviously before people knew you shouldn't download a car. It was one of the first viruses to target IBM PCs and, in turn, the MS-DOS operating system. When you would look for it, it would also use techniques to hide itself, making it the first stealth virus. It soon spread around the world, with the brothers receiving angry phone calls from people whose computers got it via infected floppy disk. You might say, hey, these people must have been pretty tech savvy to trace who created this virus and give them a phone call. These are the type of people who use computers in 1986, so I'd say probably not. How did they find out Basit and Amjad's contact information? More on that later. Brain resulted in one of the first large-scale computer virus outbreaks. It helped spawn a legion of copycats and even influenced the creation of some of the first antivirus software. Join me as we break down who the Alvi brothers were, how Brain affected computers, how it spread, and its legacy. Born in 1962 to a middle-class family, Amjad was the second youngest of Muhammad Alvi's six children. His brother, Basit, was born in 1969. Muhammad was a medical doctor, and Amjad and Basit later opened up their software company in his clinic. From a young age, Amjad was heavily interested in electronics, often scavenging through the markets in his town to look for electronic parts after school. There was a problem, though. Even though he had the electronic parts, instruction manuals were hard to find. Amjad was lucky though, he had a library membership, and this allowed him to access electronic journals. There was another problem though. He couldn't take the journals home with him, so he would often spend hours copying descriptions and drawings from them. From these sketches and details, Amjad put together a crystal radio. He later moved on to experimenting with walkie-talkies and even music synthesizers. Amjad noted this synthesizer involved the use of transistors. Now, what's a transistor? I, I don't really know. Uh, this was the first copyright-free image that came up when I searched for it, so here you go. In the early 1980s, Amjad came across an advertisement in a newspaper about a local distributor who was selling Sinclair computers. The Sinclair ZX80, launched in 1980, was priced around $230, the cheapest personal computer to hit stores. Now about this, Amjad notes, that was my first computer. A good thing about it was that it was sold as a do-it-yourself kit, so you get to know the ins and outs of the computer. Lucky for Amjad and Basit, there were only a handful of technicians in Pakistan who knew how to repair these. He then opened up a makeshift computer repair shop within the premises of his father's clinic. The business was named Brain Services. This was successful. Soon distributors of Sinclair were referring broken computers to Amjad and they were making a decent living. During this time, they also started developing software programs, the first of which converted measuring units for local jewelers and goldsmiths. It was also during this time that the brothers had created a heart monitoring program and it had come to their attention that pirates were distributing the software without the brothers' permission. Brain was developed as a way to try and regulate and protect the software they created. How did it work though? At the core of how this spread was floppy disks. If you don't know what a floppy disk is, you can, I don't know, ask, ask your dad or something, I'm, I'm sure he knows. Brain was a boot sector virus and loaded onto the computer from the infected floppy disk when it was switched on, without the user ever finding out. 
It's important to note that most IBM personal computers ran on MS-DOS and data was stored on these floppy disks. It was on one of these disks that Amjad copied the brain virus, which became the first computer infestation the world had seen. Now, you might be asking, what, what exactly is a, a boot sector? That's a good question. Okay, thank you for asking that. The boot sector is a physical sector on a hard drive that includes information about how to start the boot process in order to load an operating system. Malware makers love to focus their attention on the boot sector because the code is launched automatically and sometimes without protection before the operating system even starts up. Now, when an infected disk is booted, the brain virus installed itself into memory. It doesn't actually infect the hard disk though, but it will infect any other floppy disk that is accessed while it's in memory. The virus then stores the original boot sector and six extension sectors containing the body of the virus in the disk's available sectors. And then it flags these as bad. This is where the stealth capability of brain comes in. Anytime these infected sectors are accessed, the program that accesses it will be redirected to the original boot sector. This means that early disk utilities like PC Tools or PC Medic wouldn't be able to see the virus. Now, what's kind of interesting about Brain is the original form wasn't meant to erase data or slow down machines. It was just a way for Amjad and Basit to keep track of who is using their software. That being said, Brain can slow down diskette access and cause timeouts, which can make some floppy disks unusable. With that in mind, what effects did it have on the system? Brain warned users they were running bootleg software, and <laughs> kind of hilariously, the virus also included their names, phone numbers, and the address for their store. In addition, the disk label is changed to copyright Brain, and the following text can be seen in infected boot sectors. So that's how the virus worked, but what were some of the effects it caused? What was originally created as a way for the Alvi brothers to make sure people didn't copy their software eventually spread way beyond this though. Because the virus automatically copied on the floppy disks, it spread. Students came across it on disks at the universities of Pittsburgh, Delaware, and George Washington University. It even slowed systems at the Providence Journal Bulletin newspaper and popped up in trading terminals in Hong Kong. People found it on their computers in places as far away as Australia. It's also kind of hilarious that they included their contact information. <laughs> so because of this, they began to receive a large number of phone calls from people in the UK and the United States demanding that they disinfect their machines. Their phone lines were overloaded, and they tried to explain to the callers that their motivation hadn't been malicious. It's really interesting to think about what would have happened if this virus was more destructive. As I noted, it was kind of a benign virus. It wasn't written to erase data or damage hardware. In a few months though, after people saw what it could do, it opened the floodgates for different variants, which applied the same logic as brain to infiltrate computers and cause more damage. For instance, the brain.b variant could infect the hard drive. I wasn't actually able to find out what this variant did, but I'm assuming it was probably a bit more malicious. What was the legacy of the brain virus? I noted there were some copycats that came out of this, some that were more malicious than the original brain virus. Interestingly, Brain gave the idea to some programmers to write the first antivirus software. Among these people were John McAfee. This is my favorite picture of John McAfee that exists. In 1986, while McAfee was employed by Lockheed, he read about Brain, and he found it terrifying. From this, he went about creating an antivirus software that could detect it and remove it automatically. In 1987, McAfee created McAfee Associates Incorporated to sell the software, which he named VirusScan. It's important to note because this was the first antivirus software brought to market and one of the first software products to be distributed over the internet. Also, without Brain, without all this happening, without John McAfee discovering Brain and creating the first antivirus software, we would have never gotten this picture. This is my favorite picture of John McAfee. We would have not gotten this picture. And I just think that that is so sad. 
And so this is the story of Brain. How two brothers attempt to get people to stop illegally copying their software spread around the world and directly led to the first antivirus software on the market. If you appreciate content like this, please consider subscribing, liking the video, leaving a nice comment, it all helps.